primates coming to the primates you can see that they are the more advanced mammals you take the group mammals one of the most advanced and most intelligent group of animals is uh, the uh, is the primate prima means first that is the meaning of the word prima it's from the word prima first animals or the most important animals that's the meaning of the word prima so if you look at the characteristics features of primates you can see that these are the important characteristics one is grasping hands for example we are will be able to hold something like this this is the grasping hand why we are able to hold because we have this finger without this finger if you lose this finger you cannot hold anything how can you hold like this it is not possible it won't be strong only if we are able to use this finger we will be able to write anything use any tool or even to grasp on something we need this finger and this is known as opposable finger opposable means it can come opposite to any finger so it is known as opposable finger so in human beings we have only on the hand we have grasping or opposable thumb this is known as opposable thumb but if you look at the monkeys on their legs also they have this opposable thumb so using that they will be able to cling on to some branches of the trees so that is the the uh, peculiarity of primate they have grasping hands or upper or grasping feet then forward facing i you look at the face of a dog or a face of a cat their eyes are directed to the side mostly not to the always to the front so most of the animals are having like that but in our case most of both eyes are like directed forward there is front vision do give you 180 degree front vision but for the animals they cannot see anything directly in front of for example eyes are focusing on two wide two side so they have wider area of vision but what is coming before their eyes before their face they may not be able to identify or distinguish because at the front side there is little vision but side to its side they have better vision then large brain size because primates have a comparatively higher brain size their intelligence the eyes will be much higher they can think a lot and they have emotions also so if it is because of the higher brain size they can have emotion they have so language formation they have social communication all because of this larger brain size then they have enhanced color vision in this so color vision all the animals are not capable of color vision only few animals are capable of this color vision here you can see that many primate possess color vision which helps them to distinguish objects and identify right foods for example monkeys they are feed, they are living on tree, uh, uh, trees how they will be identifying this whether the fruit is right even human beings is also identify for example if you look at a banana if it is yellow we say it is right and it is good for eating so same way this color vision is very important for primate so it is by looking at the color of uh, color of the fruits they are able to identify then parental investment that is in the case of primates for example you take human beings human beings are uh, are taking care of their children up to a long time maybe up to 18 years or maybe longer so but in the so many of the lower animals you take a rat or a cat maybe for a few weeks or few months only they will be taking care of their babies after that their babies or children will have to uh, take care of their own life so that is not the case in the so uh, prime in the so primate primates are spending too much time in supporting their children supporting their babies and making them establish adapt to the environment in a very good manner then social sociality in this of primates they are typically social animals for example you take monkeys human beings gorilla chimpanzee uh, orangutan all these are social animals that is they will be living in groups or many members are living together in a colony or in a society so that is the one peculiarity of the uh, primates so 
private they exhibit sociality and because of sociality they have a social hierarchy for example in every society whether it is human society human being for example we have prime minister below prime minister there are prime minister so there is a social hierarchy so even in the in the state also there is a social hierarchy if you come to a college there is a social hierarchy principal is there below there are the teachers come so the such a kind of social positioning or social hierarchy is present in the so primate then uh, primates have diverse diet so primate for example human beings are capable of feeding on vegetables feeding on meat feeding on uh, uh, feeding on fruits so diverse have a diverse diet they can feed on fruits leaves insects sometimes meat so this is a advantage for primates to establish in wild by a wide range of climatic or environmental condition longer life span human beings are capable of living yeah, yeah, around up to 100 or up to 120 years that is the life span of human human being uh, then behavioral flexibility the the in this so primate they exhibit wide range of behavior and adaptation to suit the type of climate to type of environment where they are living so these are some of the important adaptations of uh, uh, primates they can also see that primates are capable of two use even in a chimpanzee you can see that chimpanzee may be some kind taking a stick and putting that stick into the nest of a uh, ant and the when the stick is stick is put into the nest of the ant ants will be sticking uh, sticking to the uh, sticking to the on the nest, on that uh, uh, stick and the chimpanzee will be taking it and feeding on the ants so this kind of tool use is present because in human being human beings become more successful it is because of this one quality that human beings are capable human beings are capable of tool use to a higher level and higher level tool use is capable because we have more intelligence so it is our intelligence that make us different from members of other group so in the is of uh the primates we have one example that is the loris so here you can see the loris is my malayalam we call it as kutti thevang so kutti thevang is the malayalam name for this and it's a very interesting animal you can see that very small animal very shy animal mostly nocturnal they are living mostly nocturnal if you look at the hands of this animal is almost like the hand of a of a hand of a human being see that uh, with the legs also they can clap they can dance see they are using their high limbs also to grab we cannot do that only monkeys are capable of doing that so they have lot of features uh, they are mainly found in the jungles of south in kerala we can find this uh, this uh, slow loris or slender uh, uh this this the it is present here so loris is an important and uh, uh, an animal there are two types of loris slender loris as well as slow loris are the shy animal that is they move very slowly and most of the day they are spending uh, active during night time that is why we call them nocturnal animals then slender build and earthy brown color. slender build the body is very slim that is why slender build and color of the hair earthy brown just like the, the skin color of a dog it is earthy brown the muscle is white and nose are projecting the muscle is this is a muscle this is a muscle is known as a muscle is white in color and nose is actually projecting so that is also a characteristic feature then uh, you can see that two eyes are there and two eyes are veiled up see look at the face of the uh, this uh, loris you can see that compared with the size of the face the size of the eyes are very large they have a very large disproportionate eyes compared to the size of the face so this large eyes is a adaptation to collect maximum maximum light during night time so it is a, that is the purpose of larger eyes larger eyes may be able to have a larger lens system so that more light can be captured during night because it is active mostly during night so night there will be little light sometimes very a good moon light will be there but most of the time very little light will be there so using that light the animal has to survive animal has to see so for that they have a better uh, um, night vision and for that their eyes are very well large then we can also see that they have a solitary life 
solitary lifestyle means they are uh, most of the time they are alone. They do not spend uh, the, uh, the they they won't spend the time with other members. So that is why they have a solitary lifestyle. So solitary lifestyle means living alone. Living alone. That is the meaning of the word solitary lifestyle. Earlier we were saying that social lifestyle. Social lifestyle means living in groups, living in societies, living in colony. So that is the nature of the social lifestyle. So here you can see that in the use of this animal, though they are a mammal, they are a primate, you know, they are coming under the primate, they spend most of their life time living alone. Only during the reproductive time, uh, only during the parental time, they are spending time together with their babies. Other time, other time they are they mostly living alone. So this is, these are the features of the uh, next uh, uh, this animal known as a loris. Now we go to the another group known by the name carnivora. So in this uh, carnivora also we have one example. You can see that the example that we have to study under the category carnivora is the panthera. Panthera is the example. Now we come see, you can see that in case of panthera, before the let's see, see the, what are the important characteristic features of older carnivora. In the case of older carnivora, they are considered as flesh-eating animal. Carni means flesh. Bora means to eat. So carnivora means eating on flesh. So that's how the term carnivora is came. So they are flesh-eating or meat-eating animals. Then they have a sharp but pointed canines. You can see that the so carnivora, their uh, front teeth. Front teeth is very, very powerful, very strong, and the canine teeth is very uh, sharper as well as pointed. Then, quadrupeds. Quadru means four, peed means leg. So, quadruped means four legged animals. These are animals which are walking on four legs, just like this tiger or a lion or a leopard. So, these animals are living on or walking on four legs. That is why. So that is an advantage for this animal, for fast running. We are not uh, capable of fast running just like the running speed of a tiger or running speed of a deer. Human beings it has a maximum capacity of 40 or 50 kilometer. That is a maximum that we can do. But in the case of this carnivorous animal, they are good, good runners, they can, they can run very fast. So some cheetah maybe, they can run at a speed of nearly 100 kilometer per hour. So, these animals are very good runners. So another peculiarity is that temporal fossa. Here you can see there is a region called as temporal fossa, and there is a uh, opening also here. So that is known as a, this region of the brain is known as a temporal fossa, and our ear, ear, ear uh, inner ear and middle ear are all connected uh, are are found here. So this is known as a temporal fossa. It's a the region known as a temporal fossa is a, is, a, is a peculiar thing that we can find only in carnivora. Uh, uh, so because in this of temporal fossa, they have a characteristic, it is often behind. So that is, the, that is one important feature of the temporal fossa. Then you can see, come to the example. We have one example known as Pandera. Pandera means a tiger. So here you can see that the tiger is considered as the uh, uh, national animal of uh, uh, India. And not only India and tiger is a national animal of few other countries also I think. Then, so in this of tiger, uh, that belongs to a genus known as a Panthera. Panthera means it is a uh, genus that consists of number of other animals also. Panthera leo. Panthera leo means uh, lion. Panthera tigris means tiger. So these are the uh, two uh, uh, animals that we can find. And similar leopard is also coming under the group Panthera. The uh, what is the scientific name of the scientific name of Le Panthera pardus. So Panthera pardus is the leopard. So these are the three animals, lion is the lion, panthera, leo, panthera, tigris and panthera, pardus. Pardus means the scientific name of the leopard. So these are the three animals that we can find and we can also see that these are nocturnal animals. Nocturnal animals, 
Nocturnal animals means mostly live uh, active during night time. So animals which are active during night time are known as nocturnal animals. And what is their nature? They are hunting on grazing animals. So lion, leopard, uh, they are mainly feeding on deer or, or, or antelope. So if you if you go to the Africa or you go to in the forest of in, in, in the east of forest in Kerala, we have tiger. Tiger is mainly feeding on deer. Deer is their main prey, main prey. So deer is a grazing animal, herbivorous animal. So these are carnivorous animals. They survive by feeding on smaller grazing animals. Then they have a larger body size. So nowadays uh, people are familiar, you are familiar with uh, this tiger, uh, elephant etc. Because uh, most of the time you can see some kind of news that tiger came to our locality and TV people will be reporting that. Otherwise elephant came to our colony. So such kind of news are increasingly becoming popular because man is somehow living in the area where animals used to live. So that is why animals are coming to that area. They are, when when they, are, they face some kind of difficulty inside the forest, they come out of the forest. So this is so this man-animal conflict is increasing. They have a larger body size. See, the body size is very large. Come, see, if you take the tiger, a normal human being cannot fight with the tiger. It's very strong, very powerful. Even a, even a, he, even a hit with this friend like friend like is enough to kill most of the animal. It's a very strong animal. So, larger body size, long tail and larger eyes are also the Eyes are also larger because they are nocturnal and they have to collect maximum light during night time. That is why they have a larger eyes. See, look at the tail also. Tail is also longer. Then, uh, digits with the sharp retractive claws. So you might have noticed the claws of a cat. They can take, take back the claws into their pouch of skin. So that is a that is a retracted. Retracted means pulled back. That is the meaning of the word retracted. The claws can be pulled back into the skin. So they have a larger, sharper claws which can be taken back into the skin so that it won't be done causing any any injury other during the uh, no, do, no, during normal times, then carnation teeth is there. Carnation teeth are means the carnivorous animals have a uh, type of teeth known as the carnation teeth. I will show you a picture of this carnation teeth. So in this of carnation teeth, the the arrangement of carnation teeth is uh, slightly different. See, the carnation teeth have a special arrangement. See, here you can see that. I will show you. This is the carnation teeth. See, here you can see that this teeth and this teeth. They are, they are acting like scissors. The lower, uh, lower teeth as well as upper teeth. So that is why this is known as a carnation teeth. Carnation teeth is a specialized peach sear also you can find. This is the known as the carnation teeth. So these two teeth uh, are known as the carnation teeth and, uh, and because of the carnation teeth here also you can see that. So because of the presence of carnation teeth they are acting like scissors and this carnation teeth will be helping the animal to cut the meat properly. So that is one important feature of the carnivora. A carnivorous animals have a carnation teeth. The male lion has a long hair on the neck and shoulder and mane. See if you take a male lion, I will I will check you, I will show you how the picture of a male lion. See if you take a male lion, this is how the male lion is usually formed. See if you see this male lion, you can see that, see these are the cat, they have a mane, they have a mane. This structure is known, this is known as a mane. This is the mane of a male lion. Then what is that? It has a long hairs on the neck. See, if you look at the neck region, this is the neck region. Neck region has a very long hair. The purpose is there to increase the increase the aggressiveness of the face. For example, when a man is putting beer, he will more serious. We will say that because it increases the aggression on the face. That same purpose is served here. 
So by the purpose of this extra hair on the face as well as extra hair on the neck is to make it look more dangerous, more serious. Then other features of that is that they have a long, uh, then uh, many long hairs on the neck, shoulder and may. And so that is one feature of that. They have a longer tail. See the body of the uh, the, uh, the skin. It is the, it, this part is mostly formed of fine skin. So these are some of the important features of the Panthera. Panthera is a larger genus, consists of number of animals, lion, leopard and uh, tiger. These are the, all are dangerous predators, very powerful predators and usually con considered as keystone species. Keystone species means, uh, I will tell you what is a keystone species. They, because they uh, play an important role in the in the forest. A keystone species is species that has a larger impact on the ecosystem. And they will be usually larger animals. There because in the use of tiger, it is a keystone species. Because if you protect tiger, tiger needs a lot of forest, a lot of uh, a lot of well maintained ecosystem. If you are able to protect tiger, naturally the tiger is feeding on herbivorous animals or deer. So when we are protecting tiger, we are also indirectly protecting other group of smaller animals. This is how our uh, principles of conservation by the forest department usually work. But to some extent it is okay, but when there is a smaller animal, sometimes this, uh, this philosophy may not be always correct. But with regard to most of the mammals and other uh, animal, other herbivorous animal, it works. So I, it is considered as a keystone species. So these are some of the important features of the Panthera. Then we go to another order, that is the order Edendata. Order Edendata. So uh, that is the next order, in this order Edendata. We have one example that is Armadillo. Here you can see that. So Edendata, Edendata, the teeth are imperfect and without enamel. So that is a uh, that is a peculiar part of Edendata. Then the second characteristic feature of the Edendata is that they have uh, scales present all over the body. Here you can see this is the Edendata, I call it, or armadillo. So here you can see that armadillo here this is a good example. So armadillo is a very good example. So then long sticky protrusible tongue, that is another characteristic feature. They have a longer tongue about which I will show you. So these are the three important features of the Edendata. So Edendata are having an imperfected enamel. The scales are present all over the body and longer protrusible tongue is also present. Now we go to the example that is the armadillo. See, you can see that this is the armadillo. And let's see what are the important features of the armadillo. Here you can see that they are known as a little armored one. Armor means body covering. So armor means body covering. And they are mainly present in South America as well as Central America. Then they are coming to other point, nocturnal, you know it is living in the night. Fossorial, mainly living in burrows, just like a rat or a mouse. Or, so they are making burrows and living inside the burrows. Omnivorous, like human being feeding on herbivorous, uh, feeding on plant matter as well as animal matter. So such animals are are known as omnivorous. Head is short with a long protrusible tongue. See, compared to the, the, the body size, the size of the head is comparatively smaller. So that is an important feature of the armadillo, smaller head and they have a longer tongue. The smaller head, head is smaller but head is a longer tongue. Then eyes are small, then eyes are small. See, look at that, they have a smaller eyes. Then pinna, see this is the pinna, pinna this is the earlobe, earlobes are larger, so the smaller eyes, larger earlobes, the keen sense of smell, they are very good in smell, that is why the earlobes or ears are very large and larger in order to collect a maximum sound, so they have larger earlobes. Then another important feature, polyembryony, polyembryony means one embryo may be dividing into two or three embryos. So usually what is happening is that in one pregnancy more than one, one baby will be born. Two, three, four or sometimes several babies may be born. So that is happening by 
division of the first embryo into several embryos. So this is known as a poly embryo. And if that long sharp close are the see the close are very long, sharp one, and are also uh, used for digging, digging the soil. So the removing the soil and making the burrows. So that is one important feature of the armadillo. Armadillo has a very powerful, very see here also you can see that. This is another example of armadillo. So here also they have a very powerful see because that this is a very powerful close. See, these are the claws. The claws are very larger, longer, powerful. And, and using that powerful uh, uh, claws, they dig the soil. They have a short legs. See, compared with other animal, compared with the size of the body, leg size is smaller, shorter. Then they can move quite quickly. Fast moving animal and originated in South America. It's a native, uh, native place where. Then another peculiarity is low body temperature. Most of the animals come, uh, they have a body temperature below around 33 to 36 degrees. Our areas in case of most of the animals, the body temperature is above 36 degrees. For example, human beings, we have 37 degrees. So they have a lower body temperature. Then coming to the metabolic rate, 40 to uh, low metabolic rate, 40 to 60 percent of the expectant in plants and in mammals. See, compared with the other placental mammals of the same size, their bodily activity is slow. That is the meaning of the low metabolism. About the different activities going on the body, in the body is going at a slower pace. Then they are a solitary animal. Solitary means living as uh, uh, living alone, without the without any any pair or without any group. So those animals which are living alone. Most of the time are known as solitary animals. So these are some of the important features of the armadillo. Armadillo is an interesting animal, but here in Canada, India we don't have armadillo. Armadillo are mainly present in South America.